Our thought for today is, life is short, smile while you still have teeth. Today we look at our first reading, the Queen of Sheba. Who was the Queen of Sheba? Where did she come from? Fascinating woman of history. And the story is recorded in the Book of Kings. She's mentioned in other books of the Bible. She's mentioned in some of the ancient writings by Josephus, the Jewish historian. So it mentions the Queen of Sheba had heard of Solomon's fame. How did she hear that? Well, it was through the, the sailors, the merchants that would travel into her region. Sheba, they say, most likely is Ethiopia and also the par- perhaps the part where is present day Yemen, that whole region was considered the, perhaps the area of Sheba. So her journey to visit Solomon, Jerusalem was a very long journey, 1400 miles. And they say it took perhaps as long as three years for her to reach Solomon, the amount of time and effort and expense. Of course, because of all the gifts she brought, the spices, the gold, the precious stones, she would have had a whole sort of army with her of of defenders and protectors. She would have had a whole sort of armada and entourage with her on this long journey. And Solomon lived about the year 1000 BC, roughly. And we know that King David had predicted in Psalm 72 that the kings of Sheba would come and bring gifts and to his son. So 20 years before um, the Queen of Sheba shows up, David had written in Psalm 72 this prophecy of royalty coming to visit his son, the son of David, who is Solomon and giving him gifts of gold and incense and these other precious gifts. Of course, this also foreshadows the Magi of how the Queen of Sheba represents the the Gentiles, the pagans coming to the one true God of Israel, to Jerusalem, to be enlightened by the wisdom of Solomon. So we see in the reading that She shows up and questions Solomon about every subject in which she was interested. Says King Solomon explained everything she asked about and there remained nothing hidden from him that he could not explain to her. So she witnessed the wealth, the great wisdom of Solomon, the food at his table, the servants, all the fancy garments and the banquets, the burnt offerings in the temple. And of course in the temple of Solomon, was the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies. And it also seems that there was a cloud of God or a fire that God showed his presence in the temple. And it says, she was breathless. She says, the report I heard in my country about your deeds and your wisdom are true. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report I heard. She then says, blessed be the Lord your God. The tradition is that she experienced the one true God of Israel and realized that that was the one true God and gave up her her pagan beliefs and that she was in a sense converted to the one true God of Israel. The other tradition, we don't know if this is for sure, but that uh, King Solomon had relations with her and she gave birth to a son who the Ethiopians call Menelik I, really one of the first kings of Ethiopia. And it's probably not Unlikely, the fact that Solomon did have 700 wives and 300 concubines, that he would have taken an interest in this beautiful, wealthy Queen of Sheba, perhaps had a son with him. And says she gave him 120 gold talents. The talent was a weight of measurement, either in silver or gold. The talent was about 6,000 pieces of gold or 6,000 pieces of silver, so it's a vast fortune that she gave him. A large quantity of spices and precious stones. The gold must have certainly come from northern Africa, from Ethiopia. They say the spices would have come from the area known as, you know, Yemen, uh, present day. And lastly, Jesus himself talks about the Queen of Sheba. He calls her the Queen of the South. The Lord is lamenting over the fact that his own generation is rejecting him, that many of the scribes and Pharisees are not listening to his wisdom. So he laments in Matthew chapter 12, he said, I tell you, 
at, at the resurrection, the queen of the south will arise with this generation and condemn it. So she came from the farthest corners of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon, and yet you have a greater than Solomon here. Remember, Solomon was the son of David. Jesus himself called the son of David. And Jesus is the fulfillment of Solomon, the king of peace. And Jesus is incarnate and divine wisdom. You know, Solomon's wisdom was only human, certainly enlightened by God. But Jesus himself is far greater than Solomon. Jesus is the king of peace. Jesus builds his own temple of his body. And Jesus is the wisdom of God himself, the incarnate wisdom, eternal wisdom who became man. And so Jesus is saying to the people of his own generation, look how far the Queen of the South traveled, perhaps 1,400 miles just to sit at the feet of Solomon, listen to his wisdom. But Jesus says, you have a greater than Solomon here.